The introduction of the orientation vector functionality gives the user the ability to control the position and angle of the head and or table of the machine tool relative to the part. This can be done either before the start of the machining or during the machining. This functionality is very important because it allows us now to avoid hitting the limits of the machine, but more importantly, to prevent the possible collision between the component being machined and parts of the machine tool, such as the spindle or the head of the machine. Let's open a simple project and take a look how the orientation vector works in practice. In this example, we're going to be machining the four spheres around the circumference of this part. We're going to be machining the spheres in standard three axis, and then we're going to machine the spheres in three axis, but using the orientation vector to control the head of the machine at the same time. So I have the toolpaths already created to save time. And if we take a look at the first toolpath, and we simulate that toolpath from the start, this is simply a surface finishing toolpath across the sphere. So here we can see a standard three axis toolpath. If we bring up the position form, we can see that there is no A and B movement, just simply X, Y, and Z. And if we have turned the part round, we can see that the machine head is well clear of the part. I'll just let that go to the end of the toolpath. So now let's look at the second sphere. And again, we'll simulate from the start. So this is still a standard three axis toolpath. And now if we play the simulation and we pause you can see quite clearly that the head of the machine has collided with this upstanding boss. And there we can see all the collisions being detected by the simulation. Now it is feasible to machine this sphere in three axis, but we need to orientate the head of the machine so it is not colliding with the part. So to do that, we utilize the new orientation vector functionality. And if we take a look at an alternative toolpath for this sphere using the orientation vector, we can see that on the tool axis form, There is a new orientation vector tab, and this gives us several options for positioning the head of the machine or the machine table relative to the part. In this example, we've used a fixed direction uh, with an azimuth angle of 270 degrees. We can draw the orientation vector by clicking on this icon on the toolpath toolbar, and we can see the direction of the orientation vector displayed on the screen. So this time, if we simulate from the start and play the simulation, and let's spin that part around, spin the machine around, there we can see that we've rotated the head of the machine through 90 degrees, or in this case, minus 90 degrees. And just simply doing that means now we can machine this sphere successfully without any collisions. And the same applies to the, the third sphere. You can see the orientation vector applied to that machining operation. 
And again, if we sim simulate from the start, the head of the machine has been tilted round to avoid collisions. Let's take a look at a second example using a different definition for the orientation vector. I'll just rewind that simulation. And we're going to expand the toolpath folder called Groove. And if we activate the first toolpath in that folder, you can see again it's a simple surface finishing toolpath to machine this full 360 degree slot around the part. If we again simulate from the start, the first toolpath does not contain any orientation vectors. If we just slow the simulation down and play that, you can see quite clearly the collisions on either side of the, the head of the machine. Again, it is feasibly possible to uh, machine this groove with the current setup of tool and tool holder uh, in three axis. If we could only position the head so it doesn't collide with the, the upstanding bus in the centre. So if we take a look at the second toolpath this time and look at the settings on a tool axis form. This time for the orientation vector, we've used an orientation vector that is parallel to the direction of travel. If we draw the vector, just rewind the simulation to the beginning. Have a look from above. We can see that the orientation vector is constantly changing and is parallel to the direction of travel of the toolpath at every point. Let's bring our machine tool back and this time simulate the new toolpath. So now we can see that the head is constantly changing to avoid the collision with the bus. The new orientation vector functionality has been designed to only work in conjunction with PM post. If we try and post process toolpaths containing orientation vector using the older duck post post-processing program, then it will fail to post-process. To simulate the uh, toolpaths containing orientation vectors requires a slight modification to the machine tool MTD file. All information regarding the requirements for using the orientation vector can be found in this single PowerPoint slide 